You introduce yourself. Tell us your name and DOC number, please. Name is Dwayne Young, 346622. All right, Mr. Young. Um, <clears throat> Let me, uh, my name is Cheryl Renazza. This is Mr. Steve Prater to my left, Mr. Chuck Tillis to my right. Uh, let me recognize the folks who have joined us today. We have here in support, uh, Ms. Val, Ms. Valley, how do you pronounce her last name? Valle. Valle. Ms. Katina Valle, your fiance and the parole project is here as well. In opposition, we have uh, Joseph. Rochelle and uh, the district attorney's office represented by Mr. Derek Johnson. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Young, I'm going to read some identifying information into the record. I asked you to verify that information. Your case has been assigned to me, so I'll take the lead on the interview. Once we finish with our questions, we'll ask for the warden's input, and then we'll hear from the folks who are here in support, and uh, then we'll hear from the opposition. <clears throat> At some point there, I'll let you make a closing statement, okay? okay. Right. So, uh, Mr. Young, you're classified as a first felony offender. You're currently serving a life sentence, uh, having been convicted or resentenced in July of 2018 for second degree murder. Uh, you were resentenced for moving the parole restriction, I believe. Uh, you have a parole eligibility date, which was determined to be April 5th, 2019. Is that information correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. So, Mr. Young, how old are you, sir? How long have I served? How old are you? 47. And yes, how long have you served? 30 years. Okay. So, you've served 30 years of a life sentence. Right? Yes, ma'am. And as I said, you, you are classified as a first offender. I want you to tell us what happened. Why uh, Mr. Peter Rochelle lost his life. You tell us. On the night of December the 17th, 1993, I was out and I was selling drugs when Mr. Rochelle and Mr. Joseph Rochelle, they approached in a vehicle, uh, they were trying to score crack cocaine. Mr. Rachel exited the vehicle and he tasted the crack and he bit off half of it. On his return to the vehicle, he showed me, he just raised his shirt and he showed me a weapon. And from that, I responded. I pulled the weapon that I had and I shot Mr. Rashid. And he lost his life. Yes, ma'am. So, <clears throat> so you've been in jail for 30 years after committing murder. Tell us what, how you've spent the last 30 years. What have you been doing? Over the last 30 years, I've invested a lot of time into educating myself and trying to become a better me to understand that the biggest mistake in, I, in my life, I made it on that night. And I didn't want that mistake to define me the remainder of my life. So I knew that I wanted to change. I, I understood that it was it was coming to the understanding that the person that committed that crime it was immature it was it was it was wrong in every sense and my whole train of thinking it was wrong the way that i was raised the way that i thought then everything was wrong so i had to rebuild myself i had to invest time to to understand who it was that I wanted to be. How old were you when this happened? How old? I was 17. And, and you had you just turned 17? No, ma'am. I was, when, when the crime happened? Yeah. I was 17, yes, ma'am. And when was your, what, so you said this happened December 17th? Yes, ma'am. My, my birthday was on December the 9th. 
that you had just turned 17. That's right. Yeah, and that's what I was trying to get at. You had just turned 17. So tell us, you mentioned uh, you've been working on yourself, but I noticed that it seems as though um, you, that focus became more uh, evident after you were resentenced in 2018. When did you start your programs? When did I start my programming? I actually worked in the education department as a, as a prep mentor and facilitator uh, and a tutor most of my time it, it was invested into the education department helping other guys uh, I also held various jobs with prison enterprises as a receiving and shipping clerk and it was a lot, a lot of that I was concerned with the law so I felt that I needed to learn the law. So I applied myself to learning the law as best that I could and becoming a student of it. So you did that so you could help your your, your case. Yes, ma'am. And and along the way help others? Yes, ma'am. Their case. So if I looked at your conduct record, what would it look like? I believe that I have 67 write-ups, ma'am. That are in my conduct record. How most many? Go ahead. My, most of them were from just me being immature, me being coming to prison when I arrived at Angola. Angola was still a place of violence. It was still a, a, a place of a lot of darkness, I could say. And it was adjusting to coming to prison at such a young age and me being influenced by a lot of people. What All right, so let's, what if I looked at it for the last 10 years, what would it look like? It would show that I went through a lot of depression. It would show that I, I lost uh, my family members. And Your conduct was, record show me that? Ma'am? Your conduct record would show me that? Not my conduct record. My conduct record would show you that I was involved with contraband, that I was involved with drugs, and that I had a problem and I sought to have their problem reconciled by going to substance abuse classes and entering the new men program. So so let's talk about that. I see that in November of 22, November of 2022, you, you did have a, a, a contraband, positive drug strain. Yes, ma'am. And in the last 10 years, you've had 17, let's see, in the past 10 years, what I saw, you have 17 write-ups. So I give you the you know, the adjustment period early on in your, in your incarceration. I give you that because you were young. But in the last 10 years, you've had nine contraband charges and three intoxication charges. Right. Then I see that you, uh, most recently in, in, in November of 2022, which is recent in my view, you have taken living in balance. Let's see, when did you do that? In, in this year, in 2023. Yes, ma'am. And since you've taken living in balance, I noticed you haven't had another contraband and you haven't had another intoxication. What did you learn from that class? I learned that being a drug addict is something that you will never, ever fully recover from. It's a step that you take every day. <laughs> But I understand that the, the damage that drugs does to us, not just to our bodies, but to our minds. And I haven't had a desire since coming to David Wade has been a relief for me in a lot of ways because it has allowed me to cleanse my mind and as well as cleanse my body. It has allowed me to re- been there. How long have you been there? Um, just like since September of 22? 
15 months, 16 months. Yes, ma'am. Well, it's good to hear. There is opposition. We'll hear from some uh, soon. Uh, there's law enforcement opposition. The DA's office wants to speak. We'll hear from them. Uh, I don't have any other questions. Let me ask my colleagues any questions. I noticed that in just since 22, you know, less than, well, maybe two years ago, um, you've three times you've been intoxicated. And I'm just curious, why why should we trust you now all of a sudden? If you've been in jail for 30 years and to begin with, you couldn't follow the rules because you shot somebody. And then you've been in jail for 30 years and you just couldn't follow the rules because of the 67 write-ups. And then even in the last two years, the rules say don't get drunk or don't be intoxicated in jail. Three, three times in two last two years you've been intoxicated. And then other things, um, the contraband and, and other things, just in the last two years. So I'm curious, why should we, tell me why I should trust you now? Because every time you've been given an opportunity to do something, you screwed it up. You hadn't followed the rules. So why should I, why should I ask or why should I vote that you be allowed to get out and be free in society when you hadn't proven that you can even mind the rules when you're segregated? Sir, my life has been a fight of ups and downs, of battles with chemicals my entire life. I don't there is no way for me to explain or try to justify my actions. I don't attempt to. It is only because of the grace of God that I've been given this opportunity. And I plan to take every advantage of it because I know the responsibility that I have before me. I know that if I continue to do the things that I do, I will always be in these type of situations. And I don't want that for myself. And I don't want to put none of the people who have supported me into that position where they have to feel like I let them down. I, again, it, it has been drugs that has been the catalyst around my life that has led to this negativity. And it, it, it took me to get away from it, to understand it. Because addiction is a part of life. Addiction is something that's strong. And through that addiction, you learn that there is a better you. You just have to be willing to always express it. You have to be always willing to drive towards it. And that's the reason that I feel that if the board grants me in giving me this opportunity that I can't let you all down. I can't let the people who are in my life that mean the most to me that are still in my life. I can't let them down either. I have a responsibility that God has given me and that responsibility is to try to change the things that I've done, the wrongs that I've done to try to make a commitment to the people who are out there, who are still suffering, who are just like me. Right. They don't understand it. Okay, thank you. Hey, Chris. Okay. Uh, Mr. Young, how you doing? How you doing, sir? Uh, how long you been in Angola? I stayed in Angola like 28 years, sir. You stayed 28 years? You ever heard of Kairos Ministry? Kyle Ross, yes. did you ever participate? Yes, I did participate in Kyle Ross. You did? Yes, sir. Okay. What do you think about it? How do you feel about it? I think that Kyle Ross was one of the most empowering experiences that I ever had, especially <clears throat> towards the end. It, it, it's, it's, it was emotional for me. 
I but never, you, yes, sir. I've never experienced the the emotions of everyone sharing with one another. I see. So, so you you really you feel that you may have a drug problem? Yes, sir. I definitely have a drug problem. And you think you can solve it, or if you got help, you can do better? Going through going through counseling and going through continuous counseling, that's something that I will always do. I see. I, I think that when you are, once you become addicted to drugs, the power of it is knowing the feeling that it gives you. Okay, so no more questions. All right, uh, Warden Dosa, can you add anything to the conversation? Yes, ma'am. Um, when inmate Young got here, he, he tested positive the night that he got here. That was his last rule violation. And he spent some time in segregation. And um, since then, um, you know, I've, I have noticed a transformation in him in regards to wanting to remain sober and um, talking with him uh, multiple times, but specifically last week about his experience here at David Wade and how that's contributed to his sobriety and wanting to live a different version, um, a different life for himself. Um, he completed Living in Balance. He is a, a barber for our general population. He does really well with that. He also serves as a peer leader for some of our recreation, recreational activities. So he's active in, in those as well. And he's just completed the, I think, third session with the uh, Victim Offender Dialogue representatives uh, working towards that. Yeah, thank you. Um, I don't have any other questions. We'd like to hear from the people here in support. Could we hear from the Parole Project? Uh, yes, good morning. Carrie Myers with Louisiana Parole Project. Um, as um, you may be aware, Parole Project uh, came into creation um, as a result of the Miller Montgomery uh, juvenile uh, uh, Supreme Court rulings. Uh, we're here to support Mr. Young should this board um, decide to, to give him release uh, today. We would offer him transitional housing and support. We would offer him employment opportunities. Uh, we would offer him programming and, and peer mentorship uh, through technology, uh, through uh, essentially social norms, uh, financial management uh, and financial literacy. The things that someone who's been in who's been in prison since they were 17, would absolutely need to know. Uh, we will provide these services and support as long as he needs. Uh, while he has uh, uh, with us, uh, again, he will be living in our transitional housing. One of the things that we would Im immediately do uh, is make sure he's connected to um, any, any health services. That includes he'll get an evaluation through uh, by our social worker uh, for any, any uh, additional uh, treatment, uh, recommendations for treatment. And should that uh, recommendation come back that he needs uh, inpatient, we'll, we'll make sure that that happens. Um, so as part of the overall programming, uh, we just wanna make sure Mr. Young has the tools uh, and the support systems that are necessary should this board consider his release. Uh, in addition to that, he'll learn consumer skills. He'll learn, uh, the, besides the technology, he'll learn things like how to protect himself, how not to be scammed. He'll learn life uh, essentially in our program. Um, but we, again, I want to emphasize that should this board uh, grant him today, we will, he will definitely have that evaluation uh, and uh, we'll ensure that he follows any recommendations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Valle, Katina. You're, you're on mute. Can you unmute your, your microphone? Okay, sorry about that. Good morning. Morning. I live in New York. And, and I believe that Mr. Dwayne Young deserves a chance. And when he's finished with um, transitional housing in Louisiana, I want him to come live with me. And if he needs transitional housing or support with drug program, I can get him into all that. I've been at my job for 19 and a half years. I deal with people with physical and mental disabilities. 
and I've have I have access to all of that. I don't what? do drugs. I don't drink. Where did you say you are? New York, upstate. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. I for live with. Go I ahead. live where everyone knows one another. Um, I have a niece and a nephew that's in law enforcement. They live here. So I'm around positive people. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for speaking with us this morning. We appreciate the support that you offer, Mr. Young. Uh, at this time, we'll hear from uh, the victim's brother, Joseph Rochelle. Mr. Joseph? Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, you know, I... I really want to be able to forgive Dwayne for what he did, but uh, some of the things what he said concerning uh, what happened that night, uh, I don't see how he can say what he said. Uh, I mean... We came down the street, and my brother got out, and he went to Dwayne across the street. It was 11 o'clock at night, somewhere around there, and uh, he was selling garbage, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it wasn't real. My brother came back to the truck. He followed him, and uh, he pointed the gun at me. My brother never had a gun, so... Uh, it, it just amazes me that uh, I, I have to <laughs> sit up here and listen. Uh, I don't know where he gets uh, this from. Uh, I mean, he shot my brother. He, my last words my brother say as he was closing the door in the truck was, I'm shocked. And, uh, he rolls on the floorboard, and next thing I knew, I got him to the hospital. Uh, oh, boy, damn, $20 damn rock. Uh, a person losing their damn life. It, it, it is so senseless and stupid. I don't give a damn if you're 17. It don't mean... Boy, I, uh, I mean, my brother had... A, had a one-year-old child, had a wife, and, and, and God only knows how far he could have went. And, and I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't know why you was even out there at the time of night. I mean, you should have been in school. Um, yes, sir, Mr. Rochelle. We appreciate your remarks. Thank you, sir. I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, thank you very much. And, and like I said, I'm sorry for... If I did say something unruly, but, uh, you know, it hurts me. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, here, I'd like to ask Mr. Young for his statement, and then we'll ask Mr. Johnson with the DA's office to close it out. Mr. Young, what would you like to say? I would first like to thank the board for giving me this opportunity. But more importantly, Mr. Rashel, you just got to speak to the board. No, sir. You got to speak to the board, not him. Um, I would really like to, to say that the mistake that I made 30 years ago, it was, it was the biggest mistake of my life. I was... I was young, I was stupid. Um, I've never been an aggressive person. I've never intentionally tried to hurt anyone. This night I did. This night I destroyed a bunch of lives. 
not just the life of Mr. Peter Rachel, but mine as well, as well as that of his of his one-year-old child and his wife and his mother and father. If it was possible for me to go back and relive this whole moment, I would have never been standing there with crack in my hand. I would have never had a gun on me. And therefore, I could have never shot Mr. Rashel and took him away from his family. Heartfully, I'm sorry for everything that I caused, all the pain, all the hurt. And Mr. Rashel, he has every right to be angry and mad and aggravated with me. But I'm not that same man. I'm not that 17 year old child. I understand the meaning of life. I understand the meaning of family. And I understand that human life is the most precious thing that we have. I hope that I hope that no one else has to go through this. And this is the reason, this is my mission in life now, to try to prevent kids from committing stupid and senseless crimes for nothing. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Young. All right, I think we're prepared to go. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Johnson. Yes, ma'am. Please. Yes, ma'am. First off, I want to thank uh, the board for this opportunity to speak. My name is Derek Johnson, Assistant District Attorney with the Rapid Parish Sheriff's. I'm a Rapid Parish District Attorney's Office. I apologize. Um, just a couple couple notes that I had written down um, when Mr. Young was speaking. Uh, 17 write-ups in two years. Um, from our standpoint, all, uh, all we hear is excuses. Uh, three times intoxicated. Um, Mr. Young hasn't shown any progress of trying to be a viable member of society. That um, you know, he stated today that he plans on taking every event, every advantage of every opportunity. But it seems that he only took advantage of the discrepancies in the penal system by being able to sneak in controlled um, dangerous um, substances and contraband. You know, in closing, um, drugs were involved in, in this in this heinous act. You know, when when he was 17 years old. And he's failed to eliminate those things that caused his demise. Um, I think um, before uh, the board can um, will consider releasing him, I think he needs to show that he has been rehabilitated, and that for a substantial period of time, instead of just um, taking his word, saying that oh, when I get out, I'll be able to change. And um, that, that's 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 where um, our office stands. That we're, we're still strongly opposed to him getting released today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. All right, uh, at this time, I think we're prepared to vote. I'll be voting first, Mr. Young. You, uh, I'm glad that you were afforded the opportunity that you have there at Wade. It seems as though maybe that is the turning point for you, the change of environment. Uh, I, I'm gonna tell you, I, I'm concerned about your write-ups. I, I do believe you need a more sustained period of, of remaining right up free. Apparently, you are contributing to the population where you're at with, you know, your barber skills and um, such as that. But I, I believe that you really need to do some work on more work on your addiction and get that under control. I think your time is coming, but it's just not today. I think you have some more work to do. Take advantage of opportunities that you have where you're at and continue uh, doing the good work and uh, right back once you've been had a more sustained period of being right up free. My vote today for those reasons is to deny for them. Mr. Crater? Uh, I vote to deny. Mr. Tilly? Uh, you know, 30 years is a long time. And uh, I believe that you've changed. I really do. Um, 
I hope that you can get some more training to um, get rid of this drug problem. I really believe in my heart that you've changed, but I'm going to have to go ahead and agree with my colleagues. All right, Mr. Young, you've got hope. Don't give up. Keep doing, keep doing it. You can reapply. Good luck. Thank you. 